Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story on action. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. Good afternoon. I'm Sherry Morrison, and welcome to the lifestyle segment of Women to Watch. Today I have the pleasure of spending some time in Phoenixville at the Colonial Theater with Executive Director Jennifer Carlson. Thank you for having us, Jennifer. Thank you. I'm so excited to, to join you as well. So you are relatively new to Phoenixville as the executive director of the theater, but certainly not new to the theater and arts industry. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and education? Yes, I graduated from Temple University with a degree in theater. Right after that, I apprenticed at the Walnut Street Theater in stage management. And then for several years after that, I freelanced as a stage manager, assistant director, producer, and then I decided to get a full-time job in the arts, working at People's Light and Theater in Malvern as the box office manager. Uh, then I ended up working at Historic Philadelphia as the program director, directing programs in the Historic District as well as Valley Forge National Historic Park. And then for the past several years, I've worked as executive director of two different museums, both housed in historic buildings. So I've always kept my connection to the performing arts and history through my work and volunteer activities. So being here at the Colonial Theater really combines all of those passions. Wow, absolutely. That's an impressive list of credentials. And now here you are at the Colonial Theater. This is a fabulous facility. Um, and I'm sure there's some great stories that go along with it. I absolutely love the architecture. I've, I've belonged to numerous local revitalized theaters over the years, and this may be one of my favorites. Can you, can you share a little bit about the history? Yeah, so the Colonial Theater and the history of Phoenixville have been intertwined for the past 120 years. The theater came to be in 1903 uh, when Harry Brownback fulfilled his dream of bringing world-class entertainment right here to Phoenixville. So he purchased two adjoining buildings and built a theater uh, behind them or as part of them. And then by fall of 1903, uh, the, the theater was presenting plays and even sh very short early films at that point. Um, so uh, Phoenixville was bustling at that time because of the iron business. And now its residents finally had a theater. Uh, what's interesting is eventually Phoenixville would have four theaters downtown. The Colonial is the only one remaining of those four. Um, and then fast forward to 1958, the Colonial is now famous for its role uh, in the sci-fi film The Blob, which starred Steve McQueen. Uh, but then fast forward a little more to 1987 when the steel mills closed and Phoenixville really experienced uh, economic decline. So the nonprofit who currently operates the theater, the Association for the Colonial Theater, took over the Colonial and restored it and started showing films in 1999. And it really gave people a place to come. And it started, the Colonial, as well as up, several other businesses in town, really spurred the uh, revitalization of Phoenixville. And you can tell and that. Sorry, I should add that in uh, 27. What's that? I'm <laughs> yes, sorry. and I should just add in 27. In, in 2017, uh, there was an expansion. It's where I'm sitting now. Uh, the bank building that was next to the theater was remodeled. And now, instead of one theater, we house three theaters, as well as a beautiful concessions lobby and a meeting space and rooftop terrace. It, it really is beautiful. So I'm sitting in the Berry Theater, one of the three theaters here in this building. And um, it holds 68 seats, and it really feels like something out of the movies. I mean, I feel like I'm, I should be sitting here with Clark Gable or something. It's got the rich red colors, and you can see the stage behind me. I kind of want to jump up there with my microphone and put on a little show, but I won't. I'll spare you. Um, so there are some really fun features around the building as you walk through the different rooms. The donors don't just give their dollars. They use their imagination. Um, Right here in the Berry Theater, if you make a certain donation amount, you get a placard on the back of the seat. And um, the one front and center says, kick me, instead of having somebody's name. So that just cracks me up. Um, can you tell us about any of the other little fun things that are around this theater that, uh, like, uh, I know the one yeah. theater is named White Rabbit. 
I'd love to hear the story behind that, but I know it's anonymous uh, who made the donation. So I guess I won't know the, the real background until maybe someday they write it anonymously for me. <laughs> my, mind, my mind goes to Jefferson Airplane and Grace Click. <laughs> Any other fun little things I should know about? Yeah, so actually right next to the entrance to the White Rabbit Theater, we do have an elevator, which is part of what makes this expansion so exciting is that it makes our spaces more accessible. Um, unfortunately, the historic uh, 1903 theater, not as accessible um, yet, but um, we have a wonderful elevator that does hit all of the different spaces in the expansion. And uh, the donor decided to call it Shaft, the Isaac Hayes elevator. Uh, <laughs> so there's all kinds of whimsical, interesting things to see here besides our programming. Yeah, that's great. Um, and I think it's so much fun that the people who make donations and support the theater uh, are having fun with it as well. What other events do you do at the theater uh, other than just films and movies? So we do so many things. Um, so I should mention that we try to make some films more of an experience and something that's been really popular is what we call edible cinema. And that's where we will offer a, a special food pairing with a film uh, and people just love it. The, the next one we have coming up is in August, um, and it's for Mamma Mia. We're going to be partnering with Avalos Creek Cuisine in Phoenixville. Um, so for a bit more of a ticket price, you can get the ticket for the film and this food pairing. Uh, and we do that regularly throughout the year. Um, so we also have other types of film events. There's horror marathons. Uh, sometimes we have speakers uh, talking about the films. But we do host live uh, musical uh, concerts and comedians and other types of performances. So John Lovitz will be here in August. Uh, Rufus Rain Wainwright will be here in October. Um, so definitely check out our website because we have so many interesting performances coming up. I think you're going to be seeing me a lot. So this Good. coming weekend is the biggie. It's the Blob Fest. And as you mentioned, the Blob, the thriller, was filmed here at the Colonial Theater in 1958. Um, the, the Blob Fest itself, uh, the festival, is taking place Friday through Sunday, the 8th through the 10th. Um, so the movie uh, starred Steve McQueen. And... Um, I, wa I watched the trailer for the first time. It's first time. I, I watched the movie when I was little and I was scared to death. Um, you know, you just were afraid this big blob, green blob was going to swallow you up and eat you and you'd be gone forever. And, and it, I'd never understood how you couldn't outrun it, but whatever. Um, I watched the trailer this weekend for the first time and I, I had a really good chuckle because I can't imagine being scared of it because now the movies are so realistic and, and have so much going on. Um, it's easy to be scared now, <laughs> but because it's real. Uh, but uh, the blob, not so real. <laughs> so it was filmed here at the Colonial Theater, and it's shown multiple times over the course of the Blob Fest, um, along with other great thriller, thrillers from back in the day. And this will be your first Blob Fest, correct? Yes. Have you heard any funny stories? <laughs> well, you know, it, it started um, early on with a group of volunteers, and it's grown every year. And I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the alien. Apparently, someone comes dressed as a big alien uh, every year for the famous runout scene, which we do on Friday night. So I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> you do a reenactment of the last scene where everybody runs out of the theater? Yeah, That's so that takes place on Friday night. And we have sold out of those tickets, but... It doesn't mean you couldn't find a spot on, on the street and watch the run out and take it in. Oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. I, and I yes, I, I know people that have been up here and actually set up chairs just so they can watch the run out. So it's funny how this has become such a, a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. And there's so much to do here in Phoenixville in addition to the theater. It's great for all ages. It, you, you know, you can do a day trip, you can do a weekend getaway without having to deal with airports and a lot of travel, gas and everything else. So it's a really big win for everybody and a, and a mini getaway or a staycation, whatever it is for you. Um, so um, in addition to, I know this past weekend you did a little uh, kayaking. There's some kayaking nearby. 
Um, so there, there are lots of things to do. I really think it's important, not just here in Phoenixville, but we're really fortunate in the counties surrounding Philadelphia, Montgomery, Bucks, Chester, and Delaware to support your local theaters. These are all nonprofit groups with a lot of people that are just helping revitalize the area. It helps it helps everybody in so many ways and it's so it's such a nice way to spend time with your family instead of being stuck on your phone or on your computers at home um and here in phoenixville much of what goes on is outside so it's a really great option for everybody as they um are trying to do things during covid and save money by not you know using gas and all the other situations that are taking place right now in our world um, so I, I really want to thank you, Jennifer, for introducing us to this fantastic facility and for your time um, over the last couple of days with me. And I hope everybody will come and enjoy this theater and everything else that goes all along in Phoenixville. Um, for more information about the Colonial Theater and upcoming films, shows, performances, if you want to have a special event here, I mean, you can rent this very theater. It's 68 seats, but you can rent it for 12, have a private viewing. You can bring in your own caterer. You can have a cocktail party. It's just lovely. So if you want more information, go to the Colonial Theater, um, dot com, And theater is spelled T-H-E-A-T-R-E. -E, and it's at 227 Bridge Street in Phoenixville. So I hope you will all join me next week as I vi visit with Ellen Yin. Ellen was the founder and co-owner co -owner of High Street Hospi Hospitality Group. She's also the operator of four of the country's most noteworthy restaurants and bars, including Fork. She's known as the woman who fr first transformed Philadelphia's dining scene and Philadelphia's most successful and insight insightful restaurateurs and a trailblazer with the farm to table concept. So um, I'm excited to talk to her and introduce you to her newest venture and project, The Wonton Project which was born out of the pandemic as a takeout and delivery pop-up and benefits Asian Americans United and Advancing Justice. They're two organizations working to combat discrimination against Asian Americans. So thank you again, Jennifer. Keep living your dreams, ladies. And uh, back to you, Sue.